Hey guys, Claudia here. Welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. In our previous Dahlia video, we went over a growing guide and all of the things you needed to know to get started. In today's video, I wanted to take you along into the cut flower garden and focus on the Dahlias and show you the maintenance schedule that I like to go through on a weekly basis. It's August. I garden here in zone 8B, which means our Dahlias are really putting on a lot of size. They're blooming and I want to make sure I'm doing these things to make sure our plants carry us all the way through October and continuously bloom for us. Today we are going to cover pest control, we're going to cover fertilizing, we'll go over watering, and then I'm going to show you deadheading and where to cut your dahlias if you're harvesting for bouquets. So let's get into the cut flower garden and we will jump right in. Now that our dahlias have put on quite a bit of size, one of the things that I like to do is remove the bottom leaves. This is going to help me with pest control and to make sure we're not having any issues with powdery mildew. That is a thing that becomes an issue for a lot of growers, especially towards the end of the season because our plants are getting so big. And I plant my dahlias really close together. So allowing more airflow, one, will help with the powdery mildew issue, and two, it will help me see any pests in between my plants. So here's one of my favorite dahlias, peaches and cream. You can tell it's pretty bushy. It's a beautiful plant, it's super healthy, but you can also see how I plant my dahlias really close together. One of the ways that we are going to help with pests and airflow to make sure we don't have any powdery mildew is remove some of the lower leaf canopy down here. Oftentimes we do see pests on the actual flower and on the upper canopy, but sometimes they do hide underneath here. So it's a good idea just to be able to really see through your plants. So this step is really easy. Again, you want to make sure that your dahlias are big enough. Don't do it when they're still small because they still need those leaves to grow. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove some of these lower ones just by holding the stalk and pulling them down. And that is going to really open up my plant. I typically do this about six to eight inches from the ground. We don't have to remove too many. But again, these ones that are shaded and the sun isn't getting to them or they're brown and crispy, you can go ahead and just remove them. Be careful when you're removing them not to tug too hard because you don't want to accidentally snap your dahlias. All right, that looks way better. You can see that with those leaves gone, there's just going to be a lot more airflow through here. And this dolly is going to be a lot happier in the long run. Again, powdery mildew doesn't become an issue for us until towards the end of the season, but by removing these lower leaves, we're going to help prevent that. And it helps us avoid having to spray anything. However, if you do have an issue with powdery mildew, I'll link a product that I like to use down in the description box, which has helped us in the past. But again, I think this will make a big difference in your plants. I will list some common pests on the screen here for you. But in our garden, the pests that we have the most problem with are cucumber beetles and aphids, specifically black aphids. We use Rose RX for the aphids and you can pretty much tell what they look like. I'll throw up a picture for you guys if you don't know what aphids look like. But cucumber beetles is a big problem for us and I can usually spot them in between the petals. One of the uh, key signs of the beetles is when you see them and you can see little holes on your petals, that will be an indication of beetle action or presence in your garden. I just saw one on this one, but it might have flown away. Unfortunately, I don't really spray anything for the beetles. I just manually pluck them away. I squish them with my finger or I will throw them in a bucket of water and then put it in the yard debris. Beetles are one of those pests that you really want to stay on top of because if they get into your garden they can cause major major damage. So I like to pull my flowers back and I just check in between the petals even before harvesting them that's where really you find them and on the underside is another great area for them to hide. For some reason I've been seeing a lot of them in our light colored flowers. I'm not sure why that is, but I find them a lot in our white dahlias. One thing to keep in mind, if you are spraying your dahlias for any sort of pests, you want to make sure that you're doing it in the cool parts of the day when the bees and all of the beneficial insects and pollinators are not in your garden. I think I found a beetle right in here. Oh no, I didn't. It's just a little bee. Can you guys see her? She's just resting. Oh, she flew away. 
we have so many bees in our garden right now, which is just such a blessing. Unfortunately, there isn't a one solution solve all problem. That's why it's really important to get out into your garden and inspect all of your plants on a daily or weekly basis to make sure everything is under control. Now that we've covered pests and airflow, let's talk about harvesting dahlias and deadheading dahlias. So there's a difference between deadheading your dahlias and harvesting your dahlias for bouquets. Usually with deadheading, I'll come in maybe once every other day and deadhead. I do like to leave quite a bit out here for the bees and I just like waking up in the morning and walking out to the garden and seeing a lot of flowers. So I do leave some here just to bloom and I watch them bloom throughout their whole cycle. This one you can tell is pretty spent. The center is open, which means the bees have probably already gotten to it. The back of it is pretty crunchy and the petals are starting to brown. So when deadheading, I go all the way down to the next branching flower and I cut it just like that. This one is also looking pretty bad. So I will go ahead and just remove it right there. Now, as far as harvesting dahlias for bouquets, you typically want to harvest your dahlias when they're about a third to a halfway open. If you wait too long, you're not going to have the best vase life. If you try harvesting dahlias that haven't been open yet, they're not really going to get to their full size. So it's important to wait till again, they're about a third to a halfway open and they're ready to go. So if I were to harvest this flower, I would follow this stem all the way down to the next branching nodes that are coming. So let me zoom down for you to see that. So you can see these are going to be the new branches that come out. Now instead of harvesting my dahlia right here, I'm going to go all the way down and cut where they start to branch off again. And this is how to harvest my dahlia. Here's another great example of deadheading versus harvesting. If I was going to deadhead this dahlia, then I would cut it right here and allow this bloom to continue blooming. However, if I was going to harvest this as a cut flower, I would cut it right down here and sacrifice this one from blooming and just include it in my bouquet. Similar to this one, I could deadhead this flower right here and allow this one to fully bloom or sacrifice this bloom. However, this will open up a little bit more anyway and harvest this whole trio of flowers and cut all the way down here to where it's branching off to those other flowers. Here's one more example. If I wanted to deadhead this main flower here, I would go ahead and just cut it back right here. Versus if I wanted to harvest this flower, I would also harvest this one and cut all the way down to here, which would allow this other group here to bloom and I would have this nice long stem. And once this one is done blooming, I'm going to come all the way down and cut back right here to where more branching occurs. And once I cut all the way back to this main branch, there is still one more branch over here on the other side, which I would then come back and cut all the way back to the main stalk, this nice thick piece to allow these two to continue blooming and more and more are going to continuously grow. So if I did harvest it here, I would still cut it right here to use in an arrangement, but this is probably over two feet long. So that would give me a beautiful long stem. Knowing at what stage to harvest your dahlias is important, but also time of the day in which you harvest is also important. I recommend harvesting in the early morning or in the early evening. Those are the coolest times of the day. If you harvest in the midday, it's really hot. It's going to be a lot harder for them to drink up that water. So again, wait till early morning or late evening and also allowing your dahlias to be in water for about three to four hours before working with them will really ensure their performance to be at their peak. One thing I wanted to call out is whether you have a bud or a spent flower. They look pretty similar, so it's important to determine the difference so you're not cutting a flower that hasn't bloomed yet. When your dahlias are done blooming, they will start forming kind of a cone-shaped seed head versus one that hasn't bloomed yet is going to remain a little bit rounder. So you can see the difference in these two. This one is spent. It kind of has more of a cone shape, almost like an acorn. And this one is still pretty rounded and I know it hasn't bloomed quite yet. So make sure when you're deadheading, you're not cutting, accidentally cutting the ones that haven't bloomed. 
And as far as this budding, I don't actually do that to our flowers. Now, if I was going to show these flowers in a show, yes, I would spend some time in this budding, all of them, to allow all of the energy to go on that main flower. However, these are not show flowers. These are ones I like to use for arrangements or giving them away. So I do keep my plants in tip top shape, but I don't disbud any of our flowers. Now that we've covered pest control airflow and harvesting and deadheading dahlias, let's go ahead and get into watering and fertilizing. Watering is one of the key factors to ensure the success of your plants. We like to give our dahlias a nice deep water every other day or every couple of days depending on the temperature. If you don't have a drip irrigation set up, make sure that you are doing like a slow release or you can also use a soaker hose or you're really spending the time to water a little bit, walk away, come back and water to ensure that you're getting a nice deep watering to your plants, which is going to encourage stronger roots. The great thing about our system, everything is on a schedule and it's all digital so we can water any time of the day or just set it and forget it. Our flower beds in the cut flower garden are all on drip tape so they get consistent watering throughout the entire season, whether it's in the morning or at night, whenever you water your plants, make sure to stay on a consistent schedule. Fertilizing your plants is like supplements to us. We like to stay on a consistent schedule throughout the whole season. So I like to fertilize once every three weeks. I like to use more bloom. It's what I always recommend. A flower farmer recommended it to me years ago and our plants love it. If you're not going to use this product, make sure you're selecting something that has low nitrogen or that the potassium and phosphorus are double what the nitrogen is. So this one is 0 10, 10. You can also use something like a 244 or a 366. Anything that has low nitrogen or no nitrogen is just going to be something that your dahlias are going to love and thrive. All right, well, that is going to wrap up today's video. I hope seeing this maintenance schedule for our dahlias was helpful to you and was a little bit more insightful on how we keep our plants beautiful all season long. Remember to break these chores up into different days of the week. That way it's not overwhelming. I used to try to do this all at one go and it would just be so exhausting. So break it up so it's a lot more achievable and enjoyable for you. We will do a full dahlia video tour once all of our dahlias are in full bloom. That way you can see all of the beautiful varieties that we're growing this year. I am always here to help and encourage you. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment sections and I will be linking some products in the description box. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in the garden today and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.